Hey, this is Matt with Two Feet Two Worlds and today I'm at this giant key. It's on campus here where I teach. I thought that today this would be a great place to come out here and talk about something. Over the past four or five days, things have really amped up in America. There's been a lot of things that have transpired and a lot of things that have been implemented. A lot of them very similar to things in China, almost all of them actually. As you can see, I'm not wearing a mask. Most people, when they go out, they will, but since I'm on campus, I'm just gonna not wear a mask since I'm away from people. Now that we're kind of on the back end of this, I thought it'd be a great time to maybe talk about a couple of things I've noticed about America and it having received more cases of the coronavirus and everything going into lockdown like it is. The main purpose of this video is to kind of talk about those things. Those are America's reaction and why they reacted this way, how certain areas are ahead of others when it comes to coronavirus and how that plays out. Is social distancing actually working? I also wanna talk about rumors and how should we respond to those? It's a scary time, there's gonna be a lot of rumors. How do we address those? And then last, I wanna talk about how do we respond from here on out? What are some of the ways that we can respond for the future. First of all, I do wanna say that I'm praying for you guys. I am thinking of everyone back in America. Uh, you're in my thoughts. It's kind of like a second wave of, of all these emotions and things because now America is dealing with kind of what I dealt with here in China. Luckily, it also has given me the opportunity to kind of prepare people to uh, throw my thoughts out there about what has happened to me and I've been able to make a couple of videos explaining that stuff and I've received a lot of feedback saying it's been helpful and uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I was able to do that and to help you guys. Really I wanted to sit here at this key because there's a lot of keys to defeating the coronavirus and the fear and the uncertainty that are so much a part of the reaction that comes with this. And really the main key that I think is influential in overcoming a lot of this stuff is unity and being unified as a country. And not only that, but being unified with the world and combating something that can travel around the world. I'd like to encourage you to hit that subscribe button at some point during the video. That way you can be notified when I actually do make another video. I'm gonna be making some more videos in the future, talk about different things that I see different things that are happening. Also do a little bit of travel around China here and there, do some interesting things. So if you're interested in stuff like that, please be sure to uh, hit that like and subscribe button on the video. All right, so the first point I wanna get into is America's reaction and why I think they're reacting that way. Now, obviously this does not speak to every American. This is not a generalization. And I mostly have seen positive things but I kind of want to address some of the negative here as well. I think Americans as a whole are used to having uh, extra. We're used to having uh, a lot of things that other nations maybe have not experienced. And I think a lot of times we put an emphasis on that. Uh, as American, we have experienced great uh, prosperity and we, we, have it, we have it pretty good compared to a lot of the rest of the world. But I think it's important to think are those things really what makes America great? I think it's great. I'm, I'm thankful to have experienced everything that I've experienced in America. I think one of the things that this has caused is people to sit back, be at home, be with their families, and really think and be thankful for the things that they do have. You know, convenience is king. Uh, we all want to have those conveniences and those things. And I think one of the ways that America is struggling during this is realizing that what happens when you take all those conveniences away? What happens when you take uh, the, the idea that I can just go to the store and get whatever I want at any moment's notice? What happens when you take away these surface level things and you get down to the real nitty gritty about what you have? And I think people are gonna struggle more if they haven't had an idea of what that feels like. They're gonna have a better time handling this. And I think coming away from this, everyone is going to have a better understanding of everyone else, hopefully, and deal with these things kind of better, realizing that, hey, good times aren't always, always going to be here. They're going to have tough times. And I think more people are experiencing these tough times on a broader scale. And that's why there's a little bit of a struggle with that. One of the positive things I've seen come from this is how companies in America are working together to overcome the coronavirus. 
And these companies have come together and said, we're going to help out in whatever way we can. I think that's great. And we definitely need more of that. We need to come together as a country, uh, unified to help battle this, look and see where people are hurting. We really need to think, how can we alleviate some of the pressure on people during this time? Another thing I've seen is communities coming together to help each other out. Facebook groups where people are willing to give away their stuff so that other people uh, who are lacking uh, can have that, whether it's babies or the elderly, it's great. All right, another thing I wanna talk about is how certain areas are ahead of others when it comes to the coronavirus and its spread and the effects that it's causing. Someone commented uh, on one of my Facebook posts that it seems like China is about 50 days ahead of the other countries. They look back at the things I had talked about and they realize that the things that are happening in America now happened 50 days prior in China. I think this is important because we can look at stuff like that and realize that if we implement kind of the same things uh, to combat it, then it might have the same effects where we're at in curbing the coronavirus spread. I read somewhere that China hasn't had any new cases and if they have, it's been very few. And I attribute a lot of that to the measures that have been placed here. I think if other countries look at that and they realize that China's had some success in these areas, then the rest of the world can probably ha uh, have the same successes if they implement these same measures. And obviously, you can't do it exactly because laws and different things that are in place that don't allow you to do that. And I think each country is gonna have its own way to implement some of these measures. It's easy for us to criticize uh, what leaders are having to decide, uh, no matter what, what leader that is. It's easy for us to, in our shoes, say, well, I would do things this way and this way. And I think it's really easy, especially in an uncertain time like this. Uh, we think that there's a perfect way that things could happen, but we, a lot of times we just don't have that information that another person has. And they're making decisions based on that information. I also read somewhere that certain parts of America are behind in the spread of the coronavirus as other areas. For instance, Seattle and California and New York. A lot of that stuff's gonna be different depending on the population, how many people are in that state, and also how many initial people were infected when it first got here. Some people think Seattle is about two weeks ahead of the rest of the nation when it comes to the coronavirus and its spread. Really, in a lot of ways, America has the advantage that a lot of countries didn't have where they were at the disadvantage in dealing with this. And I think it would be a great service uh, to Americans to look at what other countries have done to curb the coronavirus and think, how can I implement these things? And it's already been happening. A lot of my videos uh, in the past couple weeks have talked about things that would be implemented. And it's crazy, but when I watch uh, the news or I read news stories, almost all of them have taken place. Almost everything that has happened here in China has also happened in America or other places in the world. And I think it's safe to say we can probably expect more change to come. We should uh, be vigilant with the things that we know to do now. And then we also need to think later on down the line, there's gonna be some more changes and expect those. All right, another thing I wanna talk about is social distancing working. And I believe it is. The trend is down here in China, uh, new cases. And I think a great part of that has to do with the fact that they cut off people from going out. I think some people are gonna think that social distancing is unnecessary, thinking that why do we cut off everything? Why, why are we doing this? And I just think we have to think for the greater good. Uh, there's people who don't and won't deal as well with the virus and how can we limit uh, those people being affected. There was a tweet that was put out earlier this week. I'm gonna link it down below in the description. But the tweet basically showed real world evidence of the virus being curbed by social distancing. It was in Italy, it's two cities in Italy. One of them practiced social distancing ahead of time. The other one didn't. The curve was flattened by the city that did put these practices into effect. And the other one is having a lot more negative effects of the virus because of that. I think something that my mind has changed a little bit more about is thinking that the coronavirus is just like the flu. Why are, why are we worried about it? And my argument to that is why would you want two things or even three things uh, that are 
potentially harmful, having one virus that is like the flu is a lot better than having two viruses that are like the flu going around. People are gonna downplay social distancing and they're gonna downplay the virus and that, that's normal. We're, we're gonna see that, I think, until this thing goes away and probably even afterwards. A lot of that stuff, the reason why I just pass it off, it's rumor, there's no proof. They're usually like these websites that are obscure. There's no basis for it. It's like conjecture, uh, tinfoil hat kind of stuff. Also, a lot of times it's political. You can't really trust anything political when it comes to this because everyone's going to have a bias on one side or the other. You could have two people on different sides of the aisle with that and they're going to come up with two different ways that we can uh, criticize the other side for this. Positive look on that is just kind of pass it off, ignore that stuff, try to get away from social media and news if it starts bothering you too much. And that's kind of leading into my next point, what I want to talk about next. How do we handle a lot of those rumors and different things like that? Try to avoid things that are potentially harmful. If it's going to cause people to downplay it and potentially be hurt worse from what's going on, maybe we shouldn't do that. Another one that I've seen in comments and people uh, even commenting on my videos is that China is responsible for this and they're responsible for the virus because of the wet markets or whatever else. I think we have to remember a virus could spring up anywhere at any time in any country and it has. I've already talked about this before but swine flu began in America and Mexico, North America basically. It caused a lot of uh, deaths, a lot of sickness. I don't remember the rest of the world blaming America for this virus that spread over the entire world. It could happen anywhere. I think the way it was handled here is providing a lot of experience for the rest of the world. Many of the things, as I've said before, that were implemented here are being implemented all throughout the world and they're successful and they've been helpful. So how can we follow this key of unity and how can we get through this together? How should we respond? First of all, I think we should help others. Look to our communities, look to our own families, look to the people around us, our friends and say, how can we help? Maybe we have a surplus of items. Maybe we have some uh, extra food that we can give to some people. Check up on people around you, make sure they're okay. Another way we can be careful is by not spreading misinformation or rumors online. Just because you see it on Facebook and it looks like it has an official person by it doesn't mean that that post is real. Vet your information through a filter. You should at least look to another couple of sites to see if it's even true before you post it. Also then further, there's three things we can kind of look at and say, before I post this, is it real? Is it helpful? And is it positive? All right, well, that about wraps it up for this uh, talk. Really what's ahead? Really we have to be in this for the long haul. We don't know how long it's gonna last. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's still even a lot of uncertainty here. I have no clue when school's gonna start back up. Uh, it might not start back up until next year, I don't know. But we really need to be in this for the long haul with a lot of these positive things that I've been mentioning. My prayers are with you guys back in America. I'm thinking about you guys often and I hope you guys are thinking about me too. Comment down below in the comment section with uh, your thoughts on what's been going on, your thoughts on what I've said. Any of that stuff is okay. Just stay positive, this too shall pass. It's not the first time that something hard has happened in the world. I know we can do it. Stay unified. Be positive, be helpful, be thankful. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe.